On today's Apple Daily, a 14X clues in iOS 14.5 beta, and how Apple could release under $500 Apple Silicon. Plus, iCave answers. I'm iCave Dave, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. So let's get into today's news. As well as all of this week's macOS beta releases revealing product codes for unreleased Apple Silicon iMacs, iPadOS has also revealed new iPad Pro's A14X SoC, albeit hiding under the guise of 13G, a codename for the powerful A14 variant. While a number of outlets have suggested that iPad Pros could get M1 branded chips in line with the current Apple Silicon Macs, while the underlying silicon may actually be identical, I'm pretty confident that branding will stay A-series for Apple's iPad line, with A14X running different firmware and most likely using some of the lower bin silicon, like we saw with the entry-level MacBook Air, and most likely running 8GB of unified memory as standard. Now, it's also quite possible that Apple will introduce their Pro apps for iPad with this release too, whether right away or at WWDC in June for a full release in September, as of course, the Mac's running the same processing power with the same amount of memory, can run them just fine. The only stumbling block may be, of course, that as Rene Ritchie pointed out, they're built using a different framework at this point, so there is more work to be done than simply recompiling for the platform. Now, I would certainly be happy to see a more powerful video editor than iMovie coming to the iPads along the lines of Final Cut Pro although I'm not as sure if it makes sense on the iPhone. Now, the reason I think this could actually come mid-year rather than coming in September is because it gives Apple more reasons to talk about the iPad Pro and the amount of power in M1. So I think it's quite a possibility because this is bringing apps to the iPad rather than bringing operating system features. Now onto the master plan for Apple Silicon domination. In the past few days, I've talked a lot about the new M1X iMacs that are on the way, as well as the M1X powered MacBooks Pro that should be just around the corner too. But Apple's M1, their first entry into Apple Silicon for the Mac, is still making waves and causing Intel not only to focus their marketing attention on bashing it, and their new CEO has even mentioned that they hope that Apple will want them to build them for them, although I'm not sure how many 14 nanometer M1s anyone wants. Just as a quick overview and a refresher for how M1 works, M1 uses the same cores as the A14 SoC in your iPhone 12. The iPhone chip has four efficiency iStorm cores and two performance Firestorm cores with a four core GPU, and then the M1 and the A14X will use four iStorm and four Firestorm cores with an eight core CPU. When we move up to the M1X, we're expecting four iStorm efficiency cores and eight Firestorm cores along with a 16-core GPU, and all of this still based on the A14 architecture. That means the individual cores are still the same. Now, this should offer around 80% more performance in multi-core and two times performance for graphics compared to the M1. But as we know, towards the end of each year, Apple releases new iPhones with new generations of A-series processors. So around September, we'll see A15 with its own efficiency and performance cores. And although we don't know the names of these yet, they'll most likely be around 20% faster than this year's cores, still based on a 5 nanometer process. These are the cores that Apple's M2 will be built on, which will be the next generation of chips for Apple's thin and light notebooks that prioritize power management over balls to the wall performance. Sipping on battery life with low energy usage, meaning less heat, almost no fan noise in the MacBooks that even bother to have a fan, and still great performance compared to the competition. Then of course later on we'll get the M2X updates as well. Do you see the pattern forming here? So what becomes of the now humble M1? Well, as Apple is only building the chips for their own systems, the most likely indication we have is to look at what happens to the iPhones over time. Apple keeps around some of the older models to fill out the lower end of their lineup. When an iPhone is released, for example, or the iPhone 12 generation, pricing goes from $699 to $1099 for the iPhone 12 mini through to the iPhone 12 Pro Max with the latest A14 chips inside. But iPhones start with the $399 iPhone SE with an A13 inside and an older design. Apple will most likely copy and paste this model onto their Mac lineup too. Right now, the entry-level Mac mini runs $699 with the MacBook Air at $999. Uh, we'll focus on the MacBook Air for now because $1,000 is a nice round price to work with. Student pricing is $899 and educational institutions have a $799 option that includes reduced storage at 128 gigabytes instead of the standard 256 gigabyte starting point as most files for these will be accessed from the school or university servers if they're being used as communal systems over a network. They also use the lower binned M1 SoCs that have the seven functional GPU cores as a way of increasing the overall yield in fabrication. 
That means that Apple already has these lower end hardware configurations in production and ramping this up would not be particularly difficult. So could Apple offer this currently education exclusive configuration as a MacBook Air SE next year? If the rumours are correct and Apple is also planning to redesign the MacBook Air's chassis in 2022 then I think it's very plausible that they would offer this existing model at a low price given that they already make a good margin around 39% over the whole Mac line and this will likely increase further as Intel models are phased out that have a profit margin built in for Intel and the higher end models with the AMD GPUs as well. Not to mention the fact that their manufacturing is already set up for this and they don't need to do any reconfiguring of the lines. Now, I'd mentioned Mac SE models back in 2020, but I noticed that Greg's Gadgets, a channel that I follow, has also been mentioned in them too recently, so I think we might be on the right track here. But I also think, as I said, that Mac Mini would also be getting an SE version. In fact, Mac Mini was the first one that I thought an SE version should come to. When Mac Mini was first introduced by Steve Jobs with the PowerPC G4 inside, it was designed to be the cheapest Mac ever with a BYO KDM system, so bring your own keyboard, display, and mouse. It was intended to be a gateway drug into the Mac operating system and now with Apple's ecosystem built out far more than it ever was back then, it would be the perfect time to bring it back to its roots and its original starting price of $499. The Mac Mini with M1 right now is a strangely overdone beast in certain ways. Its enclosure was designed back when Apple used commodity RAM, spinning hard drives and Intel chips but the M1 board inside is tiny leaving around half of the internal volume of the device completely empty right now. Add to that that the maximum power that the board can draw is around 30 watts but it still contains a 150 watt power supply from the previous version because getting it out the door in a simple way without rebuilding anything was more of a priority for Apple at the time. It would be a pretty simple job to replace that power supply with a probably smaller cheaper model or even remove it altogether and let it run from the MacBook Air's wall charger which I believe from memory is a 30 watt charger and uses USB-C. Very simple and actually moves what might be one of the warmest components outside of the body. Then it's a simple task of building the board into a smaller enclosure. This would also remove a point of failure because if the power supply was to die in a current Mac Mini it's a lot harder to replace that than it is to plug into a different USB-C power supply. Then it's a simple task of building the board into a smaller enclosure with a redesigned logic board and this could easily fit inside an enclosure like the Apple TV comes in right now. We know from the MacBook Air 2 that the M1 could be quite capably run without a fan although it wouldn't be a stretch to fit a small fan inside there too. And you might be wondering how they could possibly make something with an M1 processor for under $500. Well, let's consider the iPad Pro. Right now you can pick up a brand new iPad Pro 11 inch from $799 from Apple containing the A12Z chip and while this is two years old at this point the price hasn't come down and the replacement we talked about earlier is unlikely to be more expensive with A14X inside when it arrives and that's possibly as soon as next month and as we also said earlier A14 is basically the M1 so yes that's $800 but it includes a custom built liquid retina display touch controllers, two main cameras, a FaceTime camera, LiDAR sensor and a Face ID system, a big old battery and some speakers you can dump all of that and add some more ports and a little fan and we're done here. And don't tell me that all that stuff coming out wouldn't drop the price by $300. So while Apple's business model is also shifting over to their new services model with iCloud storage as well as music and video streaming, bringing more customers over to the Mac will help keep them in that ecosystem for longer. As I've said in the past, it would become the perfect computer to give to your kids, to put in their rooms, to attach to their TVs that they already have on the wall. TVs and monitors are getting so similar these days that for the kind of stuff that people would need for studying and that kind of thing, it's absolutely perfect. Add into that gaming with Apple Arcade and the potential for more game developers to come over to Apple Silicon as the consumer base and the install base increases, and I think it's a win-win situation for everyone. So let me know what you think the chances are of Apple bringing a Mac Mini SE or a MacBook Air SE later on this year or in 2022 down in the comments. We'll be getting on to iCave answers next, but first, Notification Squad, we have a couple of new members. We have Ren Zagemfi and... If you subscribe, I'll do whatever you want, which is a fantastic name for a channel. Thank you guys for joining the Notification Squad. If you want to join too, just make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And on to iCave Answers. And this question comes in from Marcin, and I'm not going to try and butcher your name again. I've done it enough times in the past. iCave Answers. Do you think that Apple TV could drift towards a Media Mac Mini or Multimedia NAS design-wise? 
linking to the HomePod Mini. So when the original Apple TV came out, it was actually a small Mac that basically ran Mac OS. It used the front row interface from, I think, uh, Mac OS Tiger, uh, and there are videos out there on YouTube that you can see where people have actually gone back into it and reinstalled Mac OS proper on these Apple TV boxes and had them running. Now, they weren't particularly powerful, but they did the job at the time, and they were basically a little media streaming box. Now, I don't feel like that's the way that Apple's going to go in the future with their uh, Apple TVs because we're moving far more away from having a massive iTunes library sitting on your Mac um, on a big hard drive to pretty much streaming everything these days. Everything's coming down through either Apple TV Plus or Netflix or HBO Max or Disney Plus or one of 150 other streaming services that exist out there right now. So, I don't see that they're going to move it to like a NAS style design, that doesn't really make much sense to me in my head, but uh, there's always a possibility, but I think more likely is that the if they were to move to uh, a Mac Mini SE, that would actually make a really nice little uh, kind of home server, if you did want to keep your own media on a drive, you could just basically plug into the back of it with large storage devices, and uh, and that could serve it around your house, so that's a possibility. Um, but I think the Apple TV itself is more likely to go, as we've talked about in the past couple of days, and I'll link to the video just up here, a more gaming focus, uh, which we've heard a lot about in the past. Apple bought a company called PrimeSense, which is basically the company that invented Kinect. They bought it for things like Face ID, so I think we could see LiDAR built into it for gaming and things like that. I don't see it be becoming like a, a media storage NAS type system. I don't think that's the way that Apple would go. But we never know until they actually release anything. But thanks so much for the question. And if you want to get a question answered here on uh, iCave Answers, all you need to do is use hashtag iCave Answers down in the comments, and I'll get round to it as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next show.